Chapter 41 If you are under me, I'll consider it you are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 41 If you are under me, I'll consider it translator. Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations The air in the Hummer froze. Fu Jiu could sense the changes around her, especially the icy aura radiating from her left. He already knows. Fu Jiu was forced to finish the call, and she looked at Qin Mo mischievously. If I say that this is a misunderstanding, would you buy it? Qin Mo looked at her, and his eyes were slightly frigid. What do you think? This is really a misunderstanding, Fu Jiu emphasized the last part in order to be more convincing. You are too difficult to sleep with. Qin Mo smiled. The curve of his thin lips was still cold, and he was grinding his snow-white teeth with considerable strength. Sorry about that, I'm not easy to push down. Should I lie down flat and let you do whatever you want with me? If you are willing, why not? Fu Jiu sounded like she really gave it thought. As soon as she finished, Fatty's foot spasmed, and their speed went up a few levels. Coco wanted to shrink himself into nothing. Chin Mo suddenly reached out with his hand and pinched hard on that face he hated so much that it made him grind his teeth. He said in a deep voice, Fu Jiu. Hmm, Fu Jiu raised her eyebrow and looked up at him with confusion. Her eyes were as pretty as the eyes of his cats at home. Mostly, it was that fluffy silver hair that gave Chin Mo that illusion. If you still want to eat, then be quiet. Chin Mo let go of her face. The silky sensation of her skin was still lingering on his fingertips, compelling him to look out the window. There was no warmth in his voice. Chi Nemo told himself that he didn't throw this flirtatious guy out of the window only for the sake of Spade Z. The dinner venue was a hotel with a high star rating, the most expensive place in Jiang City. It sparkled with lights and was luxuriously decorated. Hundreds of thousands of wine glasses were hanging on the ceiling. Even the waiter was wearing formal black and white, and the service was extremely thoughtful. Someone immediately went up to welcome him when they saw Chin Mo's car drive in. That wasn't a mere doorman but the hotel lobby manager. Dot CEO Chin, the rooftop garden that you reserved has been cleaned. Today's Australian lobster is very fresh and the Arctic shellfish is good, too. Hearing what the manager said, Chin Mo tersely acknowledged it and said, you tell him and see what he wants. The lobby manager paused and reluctantly turned his gaze to Fu Jiu. He was still fine when he did not see her at first. As soon as he laid his eyes on her, his heart almost jumped out. This. Wasn't this the black sheep of the Fu family, Fu Jiu? Every time they came to the hotel, they would always show off and order a lot of things, asking them to casually open vintage wines. However, in truth, they didn't have that much money in their pockets. He was totally an unwelcome nouveau riche. Why was he with the CEO? And CEO Chin even asked his opinion on ordering. Fu Jiu instantly knew what the manager was thinking. After all, she was no stranger here, and she came here often to eat. The lobby manager must have had a deep impression of her, and he even put her on the blacklist with the tricks those siblings had pulled. Lobster then. Fu Jiu smiled, her eyes suffused with a faint glint. Indeed, she still likes the expensive stuff. The lobby manager quietly took the order down. Chi Nemo, who was walking ahead, tilted his head. He said in an indifferent tone, you like lobster. Fu Jiu held her lollipop loosely in her mouth and didn't deny it. Chi Nemo answered tersely and told the person behind him, Ten lobsters, all for him. The lobby manager. Dot. Chapter 42. Almighty Chin touched Fu Jiu's head. You are listening at novel full dot audio. Chapter 42. Almighty Chin touched Fu Jiu's head. Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations, yes, sir, Eddie E.T. that was the most difficult, yes, the lobby manager ever had to say. Even though he was astonished inside, 
he was still good at reading people. When he raised his head up again, he was all smiles. Young Master Fu, what else do you fancy, I will get them to serve it. Young Master Fu. Fu Jiu stopped, and her voice paused. I don't really like that name, it's easy to mix me up with others. Isn't there another young Master Fu who comes here a lot? The lobby manager wanted to say that there was no way to mix them up. The other one was an extremely well-dot-mannered, straight-dot-a student, anyone could tell the difference. But since the CEO was here, he couldn't say that, so he could only reluctantly explain, that, that. Call me Lord Jiu. Fu Jiu pulled out her lollipop, and she still had her skateboard tucked under her arm. She laughed out loud with incomparable arrogance. The lobby manager's mouth spasmed from suppressed laughter. What? Fu Jiu raised her eyebrows. Manager Li, are you unwilling to? The lobby manager glanced at his CEO. Qin Mo's eyes were cold. Fu Jiu. Hmm, Fu Jiu raised her head up and her left eye winked at Almighty Qin, who was close to her. She pretended to be innocent, but she still couldn't hide her arrogance. Don't take it too far. Qin Mo turned aside, pressing on her head with one hand. His voice was low, sounding domineering and magnetic at the same time, and his hard dot to dot ignore breath slowly hit Fu Jiu's left ear. This is still my territory. Exactly, exactly. The lobby manager raised his head up and wanted to let out a cold harumph. But his CEO turned towards him again with cold eyes. Manager Lee, it's just a name, call him by whatever he wants. Don't make me teach you how to serve a guest. This. This was not what he had expected. Shouldn't the CEO ask that nouveau riche to scram? Why was the CEO supporting him? The lobby manager froze up again. But, but. But what? Chi Nemo lifted his gaze, put his left hand on his belt, and said with an air of elegant haughtiness, do it. The lobby manager quivered and lowered his head. Lord Jiu. Good boy, now go get the lobsters. Fu Jiu nodded at him. Inside, the lobby manager was cursing hatefully. A dog barks harder while its master is around. Fu Jiu looked at the bitter side of his back and curled her mouth up coldly. Qin Mo lost his patience again and dragged her in. According to Almighty Qin's style, he never liked physical contact, therefore he grabbed Fu Jiu's school uniform. Fu Jiu was dragged to the rooftop like a cargo box by Almighty Qin. Coco and Fatty both thought that Spade Z could live till now because of his gaming skills. Otherwise the CEO wouldn't have dragged him to the rooftop, but would have directly thrown him out of the hotel instead. But even so, the CEO was very tolerant towards this kid. And he even touched his head. This had never happened before. Fu Jiu didn't mind being dragged by Almighty Qin like that. After all, she was having a good time. But. You ordered so many lobsters, I can't finish them all. Fu Jiu looked at the table full of Australian lobsters and felt a little bit frustrated. Qin Mo tilted his head and lit a cigarette. With a straight face, he said, take them back if you can't finish them. I can take them home. I didn't expect that Almighty Qin would be this thoughtful. Fu Jiu just erased that image of a viciously ruthless tycoon from her mind, when she heard Qin Mo say, go get two fresh ones for young Master Jiu to take home. Let him finish these here. Fu Jiu. Dot. Thoughtful my butt, it was all just a pie in the sky. Chapter 43 You are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Black. Bellied Almighty Qin, following Fu Jiu to the restroom. Translator. Hen Yi Translations Editor. Hen Yi Translations Qin Mo's words were orders, nobody dared to disobey them. In the whole Jiang city, there would simply be people at his beck and call, let alone a hotel under the Qin Corporation. Soon, the waiter walked in with two fresh lobsters inside bamboo containers. Each one was large, and their claws were still moving. 
Fu Jio watched from the side, and she suddenly lost all her appetite for the remaining lobsters, she found them hard to swallow. This man, he must have done this on purpose. Could they still have a happy meeting? CEO Chin. The waiter's hands handed the bamboo containers over politely so that their CEO could check the quality of the lobsters. The cigarette was still held in between Chin Mo's long and slim fingers. He carelessly gave them a glance. Take them to your Lord Jiu. Your Lord Jiu. Fu Jiu grabbed a huge lobster claw and took a hard bite. Chi Nemo looked at that young man who was getting slightly frustrated. Disregarding the astonished eyes of others, he reached his hand out and laid it on that fluffy head, suppressing him with a low half-dot laugh. Take your time, if you want more. We can order more. Hearing that, Fu Jiu wiped her mouth decisively and gave an evil smile. Excuse me, I'll go to the restroom first. Chi Nemo retracted his hand. His eyes were deep and entrancing as he looked at Fu Jiu for a couple of seconds before curling up his mouth. We won't touch your lobsters, they're all yours. Go ahead. He was not even giving her a chance to use the restroom. Fu Jiu narrowed her eyes. This man took revenge whenever he could, but it was all right. After all, he was the one paying. She could not cook lobsters, but could she not know how to eat them either? Just wait, she would wage a war when she was hungry again. Fu Jiu loosened her fingers coolly and stood up. She casually strode out of the rooftop garden. But she didn't know what kind of expressions Coco and Fatty had behind her. Ednell.co the second time. This was the second time the CEO touched this punk's head. Both of them turned their heads at the same time. They wanted to say something but stopped. Of course, Chin Mo knew they were looking at him. He flicked the ash and said plainly, say it. Captain, why are you so nice to this Spade Z providing him with infinite lobsters, you were never this nice to me and fatty. Coco finally spilled what he had been repressing. Chi Nemo asked for a wet wipe from the waiter and cleaned his hand. If you want to eat, fine. While looking at those two fresh ones, start eating the ten lobsters. Coco paused. He thought about that picture in detail and suddenly realized how horrifying it was. It seemed like being cared for gently by Captain was not exactly a good thing. But. It was still strange. Captain had never touched anyone's head. Forget touching someone's head, even smiling like that was rare for Captain. As Coco was racking his brains, Fatty saw his CEO stand up for no reason. He quickly swallowed the beef in his mouth and asked, CEO Chin, where are you going? You guys continue eating, I'm checking on the guy using the restroom as an excuse. Chin Mo nonchalantly leaned his head to one side. Strands of his black hair hung to the side, exposing his bottomless eyes, which glistened like a falcon soaring high up in the sky. As he was saying that, his cold eyes were like shards of ice, not letting anything escape under his nose a second time. The hotel restroom was located in the corner of each floor. Using the best sense, the decoration style was cohesive with the hotel design, very beautiful. Just that. Fujio didn't expect that there would come a day when she would struggle over such a simple question, should she enter the men's room or the women's room? Chapter 44 Taken to the Men's Room by Almighty Chin You are listening at NovelFull.audio Chapter 44 Taken to the Men's Room by Almighty Chin Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations If she went to the women's room, people would think that she was a pervert. If she went to the men's room, there was no privacy there. Unless it was a squatting toilet. Fu Jiu pushed her hair back with her hand, and her beautiful eyebrows furrowed as she frowned. Okay, it's decided. She would go to the one that had nobody inside. In order to let herself not seem too perverted, Fu Jiu put a smile on her face, and with one hand on her belt, stood elegantly near the door. A girl came out from the restroom and saw an energetic and pretty young man. When she raised her head, 
she blushed instantly. This guy. This guy was so handsome. But it was just so weird. Why was he standing outside the restroom? That girl looked at Fujio suspiciously. Fujio curled her mouth into a smile and pointed at the sink casually. The tap is broken and there's no water. Mm -hmm. ah, that, let me see. That girl lowered her head shyly. She didn't know what to do now that the pretty young man was hitting on her. Should she be gentler or wilder? That girl suppressed the excitement that was bubbling up inside of her and reached her hand out as she said in a low voice, it's fine, it should be a sensor tap. Just put your hands under and the water will come out. So it works like this. Fujio acted like she was enlightened. Then she turned her head naturally and smiled at the girl. Thanks. You're, you're. Welcome. His skin looked even better from up close, and his eyelashes were so long, oh my goodness. She couldn't breathe. How was it possible for such a beautiful human being to exist in this world? That girl's heart was jumping out of her chest. And just as she wanted to ask for his WeChat, all of a sudden, a long, pale arm extended between the two of them and dragged the pretty young man away by his collar. The girl was shocked. What was happening? Fujio was also stunned, and she subconsciously looked up at the person dragging her away. The man was standing with his back against the light. It was Chin Imo. He wore a black suit, and his collar was half open. That beautiful face looked like a face with mixed heritage. It exuded an extraordinary temperament, one that was restrained, low dot key, and dangerous. Now, he was grabbing onto her with one hand, and the other hand was in his trouser pocket. He stared at her with his deep, profound eyes. Dot Fujio smiled calmly. Almighty Chin, what a coincidence. You want to use the restroom as well. What else? Watch you hit on girls. Chin Mo slowly returned with a question. He overheard part of the conversation just now, and the corner of his mouth still had a hint of coldness. The tap is broken. God, how can you come up with such a clumsy pickup line? This punk was flirting non-stop, even in the restroom. Did he love flirting with people this much? What can I do? That water tap is the only thing here. Fujio was not embarrassed at all. She looked towards the shocked girl to the side and winked with her left eye. Her pair of cherry blossom eyes was extremely appealing. The girl covered her mouth and looked at these two very excitedly. Chin, almighty Chin. Fujio tapped on her thin lips with her fingertip, harumphed deviously, and said, Almighty Chin, so she is actually your fan. This time, Chin Mo didn't let Fujio finish as he used some strength and dragged her by the back of her collar into the men's room like a little kitten. Fujio's lips couldn't help but purse. Why did this man love dragging her around like this? When she entered the hotel, he was like this, and he was still doing the same now. Furthermore, he had a face full of resentment. Chapter 45 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Fujio. Almighty Chin, do you need me to take off your pants for you? Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations in the men's room, Chin Mo released her collar. Why were you standing stupidly outside just now? Ha. Fujio raised her eyebrow and smoothly denied it with a smile, when was I standing stupidly? Wasn't I flirting with that girl? Chin Mo scoffed and stood aside. He didn't have his tie on and two of his shirt buttons were open. He glanced at her, before his deep voice sneaked its way into her ear, didn't you want to pee? Why aren't you coming over? Come. Over. Fujio looked at that conspicuous half-dot-concave urinal. How could she go over? She looked like a pretty boy, but she was still a total girl inside. Even if she needed to pee, she didn't need such a urinal. Perhaps because she had taken too long, Chin Mo noticed something and suddenly walked over to Fujio. He lowered his head, looked at her with his sharp eyes, 
and said apathetically, I checked, at a gay meetup, two boys need to drink and pee together. It looked like Almighty Chin was seriously inviting her to pee together with him. God asterisk MN this gay meetup. But. How would she pee? She didn't have anything to pull out. Fujio tilted her head and thought about it. She then suddenly lifted her head up and pressed on the man's chest, pushing him against the wall. She raised her left hand and placed it against the white wall behind Chin Imo. That posture gave a sense of fluid handsomeness. After that, she moved closer and breathed into Chin Mo's ear. Actually, in a gay meetup, you take off each other's pants. Almighty Chin, do you want to try that? At first, Chin Mo's body stiffened. When he finally got back to his senses, a horrifying coldness instantly appeared on his handsome face. He looked at the person in front of him and enunciated his name one word at a time. Fu. Jiu. M. M. Fu Jiu was still smiling, and her right hand expressed its intentions of taking his pants off. Don't be shy, we are both men, we need to go through this. If we don't compare the sizes of that thing, we won't know who is stronger, right? Chin Mo couldn't bear it any longer and grabbed that infuriating person's wrist with his hand. His thin lips pursed, and his eyes were full of murderous intent. Are you sick of living? No, I'm just trying to be friendly with you. Almighty Chin treated me to so many lobsters, so of course, I should give something back in return. We are brothers, there's no need to be so restrained. Fu Jiu was blinking innocently, and she moved even closer towards him. Her beautiful figure was getting clearer and clearer. Her fair skin was so smooth that not even tiny hair follicles could be seen, and the warmth of her body temperature was lethal indeed. Chi Nemo looked at him coldly, and he couldn't contain the urge to strangle him. Swoosh! With the back of his hand, he held her hands and body against the wall. His voice was freezing cold. If you dare to carelessly touch around again, I will tear your paws apart. Fujio didn't mind being pressed down by him like that. She turned around and gave a bright, sunny smile. Almighty Chin, you are so innocent. Don't tell me you are still a virgin. That laziness of hers and her silver hair really did mirror the cats he kept. They all didn't know what punishment was. Chin Mo sighed deeply and pinched the young man's jaw with strength as he said every word with equal darkness, be good, don't provoke me into killing you. Understand, dot, pissed off. Fu Jiu murmured, don't be, only intimate friends would do this. Chin Mo laughed coldly, then pushed her away. He fixed his own messy collar. Don't talk to me like you are flirting with those girls, go pee by yourself and freaking return instantly. As you wish. Fu Jiu swung her hurting wrist and looked at the cold view of his back turning away to leave. She laughed insidiously. He he he. Who would have thought that the Almighty was such a pure, naive boy? Chapter 46 You are listening at NovelFull.audio CEO Qin, do you really think Fu Jiu is Spade Z? Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations sitting in the rooftop garden, Coco and Fatty didn't know what had happened in the restroom. The two of them were still eating with their heads down when they realized CEO Chin had spent too much time in the restroom. Fatty frowned and asked, did something happen? Coco didn't pay attention. What can happen? That guy is thinking of sleeping with Captain all the time. CO.CO, Fatty put down the fork and knife in his hand and pointed towards behind Coco with his mouth twitching. The sensitive Coco immediately noticed an abnormal coldness coming from behind him. Instantly, his voice rose an octave as he swiftly switched topics, think about it, is our captain that easy to sleep with? Our captain likes girls, not gays like him. Phew. Luckily, he didn't say, if he continues to be like this, I'm worried that captain will become gay because of him, out loud. That was really close. Coco wiped off the sweat on his forehead. 
Chi Mo's expression didn't change or became warmer just because he changed his choice of words. On the contrary, ever since he walked in, the whole room seemed to freeze like an iceberg. The surrounding chill was beyond imagination. Coco felt as if he had fallen into an ice cellar. That iciness, which made people feel cold from the bottom of their hearts, undoubtedly came from CEO Chin. He turned his head and signaled towards Fatty with his eyes, why did Captain's eyes change to this after using the restroom? It feels like he wants to murder someone. Fatty shook his head, how would I know? Don't talk. Don't let boss stare at you. The two of them automatically sat back and their CEO's dark and evil voice loomed over the top of their heads, ten more lobsters for him. Big ones, not to mention Fatty and Coco, even the waiter standing beside them asked, more. But, the CEO's words were decrees. Even though the whole thing was bizarre and wasn't anything like CEO's style at all. After all, having all these lobsters in one's stomach wouldn't feel very comfortable. After the waiter walked out, Fatty thought about it and questioned, CEO Chin, do you really think Fujio is Spade Z? Why do I find this person odd? He's gay, and a gay's world is like this, Coco said something for Fujio and added, but he is a little different from the Fu family black sheep that I used to know of. Wasn't he a little that before? Little that. Fatty was a homebody who didn't know anything. Coco counted with his fingers. A nymphomaniac, ostentatious, tasteless, a typical nouveau riche, but he didn't harm anybody. It's just that with his gestures and temperament, nobody liked him. Plus, he was gay, so people ostracized him. But he is still gay, and he wants to sleep with. Fatty replied to him and then stopped himself abruptly. Chi Nemo was playing around with the lighter between his fingers. He raised his eyebrow coldly. He wants to sleep with who? Why did you stop? Mm. Sleep. 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 Fatty couldn't find a better word as he was already in too deep for tears, sleep with. Me. You. Chi Nemo spun the lighter, and his fingers paused. And then his voice became even colder like an unsheathed sword, filled with lethal force. He can't do that your face won't cut it. Fatty. Dot. Why was his CEO lambasting his looks even after he sacrificed himself? Chapter 47. Why have a gay meetup? You are listening at novelfull.audio. Chapter 47. Why have a gay meetup? Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations in order to save Fatty's hide, Coco voiced out, Captain, should we test that Fujio? No need. Chi Nemo tilted his head and said the two words plainly with no emotion in his voice. It is him. Fatty frowned. I really can't figure out why Spade Z would ask you to have a gay meetup. Is he only playing games to get closer to boss? That's why he wanted the gay meetup. Fatty looked at his CEO after he finished his piece. Few, fortunately, their CEO was rational. It didn't seem like he rejected his opinion. But Coco thought of something and suddenly sat up straight. No, it's not for the sake of getting close to Captain. If it's such a simple reason, he wouldn't have declined Captain's friend request when he added him. Isn't our Captain recruiting new contestants? Many companies under us want to send people over to our company. Madame Fu seems to be having some issues with her company, all her contestants were poached away, and they can't even provide a name list. If this continues, her company will crash. You are saying that Spade Z asked to meet CEO for this reason. Fatty said and looked at Chi Nemo. Only, this time, he wasn't sure if he was seeing things, but it seemed like the CEO had almost dropped the lighter in his hand. However, Chin Mo didn't say anything. He raised his jade dot like hand slightly and picked up the wine glass on the table. He swirled it several times, and his deep eyes were a bit cold. So, this was the reason for wanting to meet him. After Fujio had relieved herself, 
she discovered that ten more lobsters had been put in front of her. Dot in fact, their dinner table wasn't small at all, they had asked for a presidential luxury table that could seat twelve people. Now, it was full of lobsters. Almighty Chin's food only occupied a tiny space on the table. He wanted to feed her to death. Fujio raised her head up and looked over. She was very frustrated. Did the gay meetup guide not teach Almighty to be generous and nice towards the in dot game friend that he was meeting for the very first time? You can't waste money like this however rich you are. These are not some small 10 dot yuan miniature lobsters, these are all Australian lobsters. The man noticed the murmurs from the silver dot haired young man who seemed to be complaining to himself. He laughed lightly and pulled out a cigarette. Putting it between his lips, he tilted his head, lit the stick, then tilted his chin up. They're all yours, eat up. Fine, Fujio also laughed with a trace of mischief. Well, I would eat then. Anyways, I'm not the one paying. But she realized that Almighty Chin was even colder than before. She didn't take off his pants, so why was he smirking as he looked at her? Could it be that something happened while she was not here? Fujio pondered for a moment but still could not figure out the reason. She had already eaten a number of lobsters and was able to endure all the way up to this point, which made her fairly satisfied. After this meeting, she wouldn't have to hide her status again in the contest, and she wouldn't have to be worried about Chin Emo checking on her ever again. To be honest, this was her first time dealing with such a difficult opponent. He even figured out that she liked lollipops. If he continued to investigate her, who knew what he would get out of it? She couldn't afford to be investigated by Chin Mo, not only because she was someone who was reborn, but most importantly. She was a girl, not a boy. Zero, gay meetup. In Chinese, Mian Ji, meaning two male friends meet. Up, for they act quite close, it gives a feeling to others that they may be gay and like each other romantically. Chapter 48 Give the bill to your Lord Jio you are listening at Novel Full. Audio. Chapter 48 Give the bill to your Lord Jio Translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations After finishing the last lobster, Fu Jio thought it was time to leave, and she went to thank Almighty Qin, thank you for your lobsters. See you later. She heard a half dot laugh from Qin Mo, you're done eating. Yeah, done. Fu Jio nodded. She was in a good mood. Almighty Qin learned to socialize, proving that their gay meetup actually worked. Qin Mo smiled and looked at the lazy Fu Jio. A gleam of cold light swept across his eyes as he raised his hand. The waiter immediately handed over the menu. Chin Mo looked at that waiter and said, Get the bill. Bill. The waiter was confused. CEO never needed to foot the bill when he was eating here. Coco and Fatty didn't know what was happening either. But they heard their CEO add slowly, Give it to your Lord Joe, it's on him today. Coco. Dot. Fatty. Dot. Fujio. Dot. Even the waiter. Dot. Fujio had the most direct reaction. Her eye, which was about to flirt with Chin Mo, twitched a little. Since. Since when did this meal become her treat? Wasn't this hotel named Chin? Almighty, I remember this is your family's hotel. Are you sure you want me to foot the bill, that where were his manners? Fujio raised her eyebrow. Even Coco and Fatty were embarrassed. After all, the CEO never asked anyone to treat him to a meal, especially since this was his hotel. The waiters who were standing to the side looked at one another and didn't walk up. Chi Nemo looked at Fujio's beautiful cherry blossom eyes and said nonchalantly, This is how I treat my close friends. Fujio. Dot. This man did this on purpose. He was using her own words to upset her. She blew intimately on his ear. And now, he was doing this to her. All she had was 5,000 yuan, which she earned from playing games. She only had enough for five lobsters. 
The gay meetup handbook was complete bullsh asterisk t. Almighty Cheen, if you continue to be this keen on your revenge, forget making any gay friends, you won't even be able to marry a girlfriend, alright. What? You don't want to treat me to dinner. Cheen Mo took the teacup but didn't drink from it. As his eyes were exuding a faint light behind the thin smoke from his cigarette, he said, didn't you say that we were close? Fujio leaned back and decisively rebutted, it's not that I don't want to, I just don't have that much money. No money. You. Coco replied in a high dot pitched voice, seeming like he didn't buy it, how's that possible? Fujio laughed, why is it not possible? Someone thought I was the shame of the family and was afraid to offend young Master Qin, so he excluded me from the Fu family. You should know about that. Coco did know. After all, they had a small business relationship with the Fu family. That was actually quite shocking news. His dad also said that no matter how disgraceful Fu Jiu was, he shouldn't have taken care of someone he kept outside like his own, going as far as cutting off financial support for the mother and son. The three were even more shameless, stealing their contestants at this critical moment in order to crush He Honghua. In a split second, Coco didn't know what to say himself. He only turned his head to his CEO. But Chi Nemo didn't say anything. Fujio opened her mouth again as she placed one hand on the back of their CEO's chair. Her face was very close to his, and her voice was flirtatious. Almighty Chin, how about I pay with myself? Chapter 49 You are listening at NovelFull.audio Have a control on him when you need to, Almighty Chin. Translator Henyi Translations Editor Henyi Translations At that very moment, the temperature in the room dropped by several degrees. The waiters were all staring at the side with stiff fingers. The shock in their eyes was indescribable. Someone dared to. To position himself against CEO. And. What did he say? Pay with his body. Please don't let it be what they were thinking of. But looking at that young master Fu's attitude, he had indeed said that to the CEO. It was too hard for their guests not to head in that direction. Especially those paper-thin pink lips which were only about an inch away from the CEO's ear. A bit closer and they would already kiss. The CEO's temperament cooled by a lot. But that young master didn't pay attention to this, and the tear-shaped mole under her eyes brought out a bewitching luster. What? You don't want me to pay with my body. Then allow me to kiss you. Fujio heartily said that and was about to take immediate action. Chin Mo's eyes abruptly turned cold. His hand reached out and clenched her wrist, pressing Fujio on the table. He had a look of impatience, clearly hoping he could strangle Fujio at that very instant. Then, he took Fujio's wallet from her school uniform pocket by force and readily threw it into the hands of a waiter. His cold voice sounded like an icy pool in the snow. Swipe all the cards clean. Yes, sir. At this time, there were no waiters who dared to disobey the commands of Chin Mo. Anyone could see that the image of their CEO, who had always been cold and indifferent, was about to be twisted due to Fujio's flirtation. Fujio still wanted to keep some of her wealth, so she attempted to negotiate with Chin Mo, do you mind saving me a thousand yuan for my living expenses? Chi Nemo did not listen to Fujio at all. In that same single gesture, he pressed her back down. Looking down at her, he finally forced himself not to break the guy's wrist. Who would have thought that this guy would learn to behave? He maintained that position and looked at him with a smile. Faint, warm breaths hit the back of his own hands. He was not sure why, but Chi Nemo once again thought that Fujio looked like his cats. Even her hair looked very soft, brushing his palm again and again. L.O. people not in the know would think that this young man was being playful. In fact, this guy was just pretending. Even if they were going to game together in the future, he still had to change that flirting disease of his. Flirting with whomever he saw, where on earth did he learn this from? Chi Nemo narrowed his eyes. 
He extinguished his cigarette in the ashtray with one hand and pressed Fujio down with great force using the other. He still had that suit jacket on him, and a lock of black hair on his forehead drooped down naturally, making him look extremely manly. And it wasn't just his posture, but his sharp eyes too. This Chin M.O. could make people's legs weak by merely looking at them. No wonder his fans called him Almighty Chin. Too handsome. Too cool. It was a pity that Fujio wasn't in the mood to appreciate a god's beauty right now. After all, her cards were being swiped clean, and for a hacker who had just saved up a little, it was a pure nightmare. CEO Chin. That waiter ran back with sweat all over his forehead as he raised up both of his hands high. The bill is 26,580 in total, but Lord Jio only has 5,000 on his card. They've all been swiped already. Chin Mo curtly acknowledged the waiter's words. Fujio thought that was the end of this whole thing. After all, there was no more money in her card now, so what else did he want? To her surprise, when she was about to sit up, she heard that man carelessly add, put the rest on your Lord Jio's tab for later. Chapter 50 Chin Mo Let me take you home you are listening at novelfull.audio Chapter 50 Chin Mo. Let me take you home translator. Henyi Translations Editor. Henyi Translations 8th Tab. Nobody ever put their bills on a tab here, especially since people in their age group love to compare who was richer. Putting bills on a tab to pay later when going out to eat. How shabby was this? Coco bit his finger with his head down. CEO was really scheming and evil this time. He was obviously helping Fujio become infamous in their circle. Later on, no matter where Fujio went, this thing would be brought up. Fujio didn't really care about her reputation, but she cared about her money. Almighty Chin, didn't the gay meetup guide tell you that if your gay friend runs out of money, you should pay the rest in full? Chin Emo carelessly glanced at her. That is during a normal meetup, but that doesn't suit you. In order to stop your ridiculous thoughts about paying with your body, you should pay in full with your money. Fujio. Dot. This meal of lobsters was such a loss. Dot in order to take less damage, Fujio, who originally didn't want to, decided on the spot to take those two lobsters home instead, even if she had to carry them all the way. Today was her treat, and she still owed a bill of 30,000 yuan but only money was needed to resolve the matter. With this meal, she wouldn't need to worry about being investigated again. Are you going back by yourself, or do you want me to give you a lift? Chi Nemo looked at the young man who was carrying his lobsters. He looked a bit like his own cat when it got drenched in the rain. He knew that this guy had sharp nails even though he was pretending to be poor and destitute. Chi Nemo still asked him in a low voice, after all, he still had good manners as a member of the Chin family. Chin Emo also thought about something else, whether or not this guy would request for anything else in the car. As long as it was nothing overbearing, he would say yes. After all, his biggest reason for meeting up with Spade Z was to ask him to join the team. Fujio wasn't making it easy for him. She flipped her silver hair and the corners of her mouth curled upwards. Send me back. I don't have money for a cab. It's far from my place, so I can't skateboard back. M. M. Chinimo reached out and opened the car door. He appeared emotionless, but he was still cold, arrogant, and regal. Now, they finally had the atmosphere of a gay meetup. Fatty and Coco both thought that this was nothing close to a gay meetup. It was simply an action movie with daggers flying around. Fatty was still the one who drove. There was music playing in the car. Fujio sat on the left side of Chin Mo. There wasn't much distance between the two, but they didn't exchange any words. Coco wasn't used to this and opened his mouth, Fujio, what about your mum's company? Is it really closing down? Why would it close down? Fujio directed her eyes away from the night view outside. She had a deep look in her eyes. 
Coco licked his lips. I heard some news about your mom having her contestants poached, and now the company can't form a team. If your mom doesn't do anything, your company would be eliminated from the competition. Once the investors withdraw their money, your mom's company won't be able to take the hit. It's true. Fujio laughed, freezing coldness emerging from the bottom of her eyes. Who told you that? That three. Or that Fu family's illegitimate child. Whoever told you that, my mom's company will be fine. It's their companies that will be closing down soon. Coco didn't expect that the free spirit at the hotel just now would exude such strong suppressive pressure. At this moment, he finally believed that Fujio, the nouveau riche prodigal son, was that spade Z who had defeated them over and over again online. 